Tundra Nation, with the resurgence of Flu-19, RSV, Houthis firing rockets around the Red Sea like lawn darts, and Iran getting, shall we say, plucky, it's entirely understandable you might be checking in on your own supply cache. Yes! Definitely. This is, of course, on top of the usual ways the world may end, like old Vlad over in Russia has one too many vodka shots, and boom! There goes the Denton County Fairgrounds, Toronto, and the NHL Hall of Fame in a flash of light. That's a dang it. Anyone not wearing SPF Yes sunscreen is going to have a bad time. Thinking about the right apocalypse companion in the shape of a firearm is not just smart, it's essential. So sit back, watch that doomsday bingo card fill up fast, and let's start the show. First up, let's give a slow clap for the darling of discount bins, the pride of pawn shops, and the boomstick backseat armory collections across the nation, the High Point C9. It's the Swiss Army knife of guns if the Swiss Army only needed a blunt object. This chunk of chutzpah is less survival tool and more of a conversation starter, like, hey, did you know my carry gun weighs double that of a football? With all the class of a cinder block strapped to a bent 2x4, the C9 is telling me you're the type of guy that puts functionality above all else. You drive a 94 Ford Taurus with different colored doors and a bumper sticker that reads, mess with the bull, get the horns. When the fuel runs out, you'll replace it in the apocalypse with a rusted out shopping cart from Piggly Wiggly with one wobbly wheel. But to the select few who've crowned the high point as their ride or die in Armageddon's armory, it's crystal clear. You consider yourself the thrifty one of your friend group. But there is a bit of a problem. When you pull out your Chonky Boy C9 from the camo fanny pack you refer to as your tactical response bag, well, here's what happens. The baddies, they're not exactly trembling in terror, they're bent over in hysterics. When you do finally run through the laughable eight round capacity of the C9, rest easy knowing that you're armed with the next best thing, a makeshift melee weapon. That's right, this brick with a handle could double as a bludgeon at any renaissance fair in the US, or maybe just imitate a trebuchet and huck it at your would-be attackers as a distraction while you run like the wind. I'm selling it today. Acting. Not really. Time to amp up those gym sessions, gents. Your pitching arm's about to get the workout of a lifetime that'll make a major leaguer jealous. It's all part of the deal when you sign up to protect the pallets of canned cheese product that you hid before the end of the world. I mean, because who needs refrigeration when your food's chemical structure laughs at the laws of nature? Forged from the finest recycled bedpans that money can buy and finished with an aesthetic that makes public housing in the Soviet Union look positively bohemian, the C9 screams, I've made questionable life choices. This high point is like an old meme. It gets the job done, but everyone's seen it and nobody's laughing anymore. Hey folks, here's a quick word from our sponsor, PWS. PWS is now offering their advanced BDE suppressors in four caliber options, 9mm, 5.56, 7.62, and 22. These suppressors offer revolutionary sound control all while remaining lightweight and tough. They're easy to clean, they're easy to install, and they're easy to maintain. These suppressors are gonna make shooting even better than it was before. Moving on from handguns that double as gym weights, let's slide on down the gun rack a little bit and talk about the Mossberg 500 Tactical Turkey Edition. It's the shotgun that tells everybody, don't call me in October because I'll be too busy making those gobblers eat lead. You've chosen to stretch your survival skill set by hunting one of the few birds on planet Earth that nature is condemned to a maximum altitude of 10 feet. Wow, Lady Grizel Winifred Louisa Cochran's got nothing on you. Google it. Oh, and don't give me the whole turkeys or tiny dinosaurs line. That's just your way of trying to butch up luring out your prey with an expensive kazoo before you start blasting. Your current ride is a GMC conversion van that you personally painted in mossy oak to match your shotgun and the custom overalls that your wife made you. Chambered in what might as well be a glorified BB gun, 20 gauge, this scatter gun has more dazzle than the paint job on a 16 year old's first beater car and about as much stopping power as a politician's promise. It's the kind of gun that bellows, look at me, I think red dot sights are personality traits. 
This is Joe Senator in the campaign ad trying to look just plain folk while pretending to shoot a shotgun while standing in a cornfield wearing loafers. This shotgun is the ideal choice for those who've watched one too many action movies and now believe a single pump of the tactical turkey will send all the baddies running for the hills. However, there's a twist. Committed to the camo life, your apocalypse bunker is just an abandoned barn where you plan to sleep on hay bales and eat all the wild turkey jerky you can dehydrate in the back of your van. It's delicious. Next up in our survivalist runway show, we have the Mini-14, the rifle that's the Clark Kent to the AR-15 Superman. Mini-14 fans are those who usually find themselves gun-blocked by state laws and use forum posts as therapy sessions, lamenting it's the only good rifle that they can buy. We get it, where you live sucks, but your 50th comment about it, well, it's just not necessary anymore. Then there are the Mini-14 owners who think their rifle is a real rifle and not some grown-up set of Legos. Like an indie music lover kinda who claims vinyl records are superior, the Mini-14 is not for us mainstream basics. <laughs> Bro, we just wouldn't get it, I suppose. They proudly drive their vintage VW Beetle festooned with a Gotwood bumper sticker to the range. That's where they unwrap each of their proprietary expensive as unicorn tooth magazines necessary for the rifle to feed properly. If the Mini-14 is your apocalypse firearm, then you want to signal to all the fellow survivalists out there that you're above the tactical craze. The Mini-14 owner seeks a more authentic experience in the apocalypse. If by authentic, they mean getting a rifle with the reliability of a Russian conscript and the design philosophy of a duck-billed platypus to operate smoothly in a future wasteland. Well, good luck to you, bud. And please let me know where you plan to hide out in the apocalypse so I can come right, I mean, uh, visit you. The Mini-14 aficionado is the guy who bought Betamax over VHS, HD DVD over Blu-ray, and now they're doubling down on betting their butts on a rifle wielded by 80s TV cops and that one A-team guy who couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. So proudly rack your Mini-14 survivor. I'm sure style will count for something in the apocalypse. Leaping into the time warp, we land at the feet of the Winchester 1894, the grandpappy of lever actions and the chosen iron of the Apocalypse Cowboy cosplayer. Apparently, when the grid goes down, out come the cowboy hat, spurs, and duster you found in your wife's luggage after her business trip with her co-worker, Darren. Yearning for a return to a simpler time, the 1894 owner will turn the apocalypse into a bad Old West cosplay. They'll pack up their saddlebags and head west singing, Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys, so off-key that their horse will find the nearest cliff to fall off of just for some peace and quiet. Unfettered by their sudden lack of transportation, they continue on with the optimism of a pioneer to brand their apocalypse dreams onto the world. Of course, the 1894 owner will regale you with the virtues of the 30-30 round, the most popular round for these guns, which have become about as elusive as a polite online conversation. The round has roughly the same ballistics as a potato with the added bonus of severe shoulder injury after repeated use. The lever gun prepper simply will never admit that the gun is a mechanical aberration whose time was short and surpassed by bolt actions and stripper clips. The lever gun owner is so enchanted with the cowboy lifestyle that they went out and bought a brand new Ford Bronco because that's what a cowboy would drive. But, well, they cheaped out and they didn't get the 4x4 package. They'll wax poetic about the elegance of wood grain and blued steel, but seem to conveniently forget that in an actual fast-paced gunfight, well, they're going to be outgunned by every raider with a semi-auto who's not stuck in the Wild West. Oh, and if lever action aficionados ever did face a marauding horde, they'd have to hope that the bad guys would agree to a timeout while they fiddle with their tube magazines. Let's face it, when your survival plan revolves around a rifle from the age of steam engines, you might as well wear a top hat and a monocle for the final standoff because, buddy, you're doing this apocalypse with flair or utter foolishness. Your choice. Behold the 50 Action Express Desert Eagle, the metaphorical monster truck of the firearms world. This is the hand cannon that you choose and you want to say, I'm compensating for a lack of everything else. This beastly sidearm isn't just a gun, it's a full-blown fire-breathing monster that thinks subtlety is for those who can't bench press a Harley. It's the firearms equivalent of wearing an Ed Hardy shirt that says, I have made some questionable decisions. 
The Deagle, as the cool kids call it, is for the enthusiast who believes stopping power is real and measured in muzzle flash. Why shoot a bullet when you can launch a golf ball sized projectile with enough recoil to chiropractically readjust your spine? The Desert Eagle is the key component of the standard midlife crisis pack that also includes a massive Winnebago and a Corvette to tow behind it. If you ever spot a dude at the range in his 50s decked out in Miami Vice style shirts loud enough to cause a migraine waving a Desert Eagle around, it's time to evacuate. He's probably trying to impress those Facebook hotties with his mag dumping skills while barely managing to keep his pistol pointed downrange. Oh, and let's not forget, after you do manage to fire off a round, there's the joy of finding any brass that's been ejected into the next zip code. But don't worry, when you're struggling to reload this behemoth while defending your compound against wasteland raiding parties, just remember, at least you look cool on Instagram, assuming the satellites are still up to witness your last stand. If the Apocalypse had a VIP lounge and bottle service, that's where the owners of this next firearm would expect to be. Here we have the Q Honey Badger. The firearm's so quiet, the only thing you're gonna hear is your own heartbeat. Oh, and maybe the awkward sound of moss building a new home in your now empty wallet. The Honey Badger is for owners who cherish silence above all else, yet seem conceptually opposed to practicing it when it comes to their own voice. Let's face it, most of these top dollar honey badger holders would rather lecture you on the theoretical stopping power of their whisper rounds than actually stop anything. They're the guys who have an opinion on every piece of kit in your bag, yet the only thing they're hitting is the order now button on their favorite gear site, not the range. It's a totem for the I've seen action in the deadliest parts of my backyard brigade. These are the type of guys who think tactical gear is appropriate attire for light drizzles and school board meetings. The Q Honey Badger is the gun you whisper secrets to at night, hoping that it won't tell the other firearms you can't actually grow a beard. They're the keyboard warriors of the gun world, expert opinions flying off fast and furious, but the only thing that they've ever shot is an unboxing video. I feel like somebody's trying to describe me in this uh, in this video here, except I don't have a honey badger. This honey of a gun attracts the tactical Timmies. The guys have appointed themselves the commander of the block and their suburban driveways the front line. There they are defending against the invasions of packages and dog owners who let Brutus, their bull mastiff, go number two on the neighborhood lawns. According to this guy, an apocalypse is no reason to violate HOA rules. These guys act as if they've been cast for the lead role in Survivor, My Front Lawn. They'll tell you at length how their honey badger whispers sweet nothing so deadly you'll never hear your own inevitable demise coming. Yet they're about as likely to hit a real target at distance as your mom is doing the same thing while double fisting a shake weight. <laughs> In the apocalypse, they'll plan to let their credit score do the talking. After all, while tr why train even while well, you can accessorize? <laughs> Subscribe, folks. <laughs>